Hi guys, John from PMP Campers. I do your hand of a video on your uh, Swift Sundance. So we start under the bonnet. We've got the engine battery on the left-hand side here. Power steering fluid uh, goes in here in this reservoir. Brake fluid goes in this yellow topped reservoir there. Under here is just sort of fuses and relays and stuff like that. Um, this is your engine coolant and your washer fluid goes there. Engine oil gets put in through this cap here and then you check your oil from your dipstick here. And I will just point out to you um, that the bonnet release is down here underneath the steering wheel and then this one here is just a, a steering wheel adjustment uh, or a steering column adjuster. Um, so that's where that goes there. Um, so then we got the, we're on the driver's side now by the way, um, offside. So this is the water cap, so the water filling cap. Uh, so there is a little spring inside of here. So you've got to make sure you push it in when you're going to take it out and put it back. So push in and round to the right to put it back. And then you just put your key in there, tow it 90 degrees, and then it will just spin freely. And again, so push in and round to the left to put it out. So that's nice and easy. Um, next thing along, we've got your hookup point. So if you're on a campsite, that's where you hook up. And you do have to do that uh, when you sort of put it away. Make sure that when you put it down, you hit off both sides and make sure you hear that click otherwise they do come you know fly open when you're driving uh, and it's quite annoying so make sure you do that um, the next one along is your LPG gas locker you have got space in here for two of these six kilo uh, propane bottles uh, or as well you probably have room for two seven kilo butane bottles but you've got a, reg a new regulator here and a new hose uh, and this regulator the red regulator is uh, for propane only you wouldn't be able to fit this on the top of a, uh, a butane bottle so if you want to keep it going how it is with this then I would recommend uh, doing that because really propanes are a lot better than butane which is the blue bottles uh, because propane's got a much lower um, sort of freezing point and a higher uh, sort of burning point if you like uh, so if you were to take this away somewhere really really cold you wouldn't ever struggle to get gas coming through uh, from one of these red propane bottles um, anyway so to actually turn the thing on you if i'll just swap hands you've got to turn it anti-clockwise for on so round to the left for on which i've already done this is why it won't go any further so if you do that when you do go to turn it on if you turn it on until it won't go any further then you know when you come back to it to turn it off it'll only go one way so now if i were to turn it off i'd go round to the right like that all the way till you can't turn it anymore it doesn't have to be too tight but like i said turning it on turn it all the way on uh, and then when you come back to it you can't get confused um this is the sort of factory gas spanner um but if i'm totally honest they are a bit awkward to use sometimes although they are because they're thin they're quite easy to get into the little gaps but if i was you i'd, I'd invest in a, a proper big spanner uh, just much easier to get them uh, sort of on and off um yeah so you got i, I replaced this hose um because it was out of date before and the uh, the regulator so you've got 10 years on the regulator and five on the uh hose so next locker along uh, is your uh toilet cassette so you've got the fresh water uh flush so you don't have any separate flush fluid to keep your eye on um so that's the pink fluid so what that means is that if you have a little bit of water in your fresh water tank then you can uh, flush your toilet also if you did want to keep your uh, the actual toilet bowl itself uh, the reason they use the pink stuff is so that it stays lubricated so if you did want to keep it lubricated with the pink fluid you can get a spray bottle and just spray it around the toilet bowl inside every once in a while uh, but you know it's only an optional thing you don't have to do that uh, to actually re release and empty the cassette itself you've got this yellow lever underneath so pull that up and pull and then you can pull the entire thing out uh, when you're emptying these you need to make sure that you've got this button pushed all the way in uh, it's a pressure release valve and it'll make sure it comes out you know a lot smoother and easier um, if you find one day that you're in the van and you can't or outside the van sorry and you can't take this out then what you need to do is go back onto the inside of the van and close the flap for the flush over because you'll find that it's open um, and then it'll all sort of come out as it should like it just did there uh, and this is the bit that actually turns when you 
are inside the van. So if you turn the flap inside the van, that is how that works. And uh, the cassette is where the um, blue fluid goes in, just a cap full. So if you took this cap off, filled the cap up, and just that much, uh, and then that'll break down your toilet paper. So, all right, moving on to the back, what you've got here, which is your um, boiler vent. So if you had your, uh, hot water, you know, your hot water on, and you wanted to double check that it was definitely lit, you can come around to the back and put your hand over here, uh, and then that'll make sure that, you know, that'll let you know that it's definitely lit up as it should be. Um, so next locker along. So we've got this big one for the uh, bunk bed there. So these two have to be in this position in order for it to open up. So if I show you, it'll open up and it's on gas struts. So that'll open right up, obviously too close to another van right now, but it will open right up on its own. And then to close them up, push it all the way in. Sometimes you do have to lean on it a little bit, but just turn these whichever way they'll go, which was that way. So now that is locked in. Same with this side, all around. And then once you've put your key in it, which I will just do, keep stop lands. Right, so this is how it was. Just turn it this way, and then that'll lock in like that. Same for this side. Turn it just the one way, locked in. That's not coming out. All locked up. Um, underneath, we've got your waste drain. So if I open that up, you've got to see the ball in there. If I open that up, you see the waste water coming out now. Um, there you go. So I will empty that out whilst we're doing the video now. Well, that's where you drain out your fresh water. And then finally on the outside, we've got your two fridge vents here. So if you have the fridge lit up on gas, you can put your hand over here at the top, see this vent here, uh, pop your hand over the top there and you'll feel hot air coming out of there. Uh, and that's just to sort of guarantee you that it's definitely lit up. Uh, but obviously we've checked all of that and it's all good and working um, as it should be. Uh, yeah, so I think that's it um, for the outside. Okay, so, oh, and we've got your, uh, this is your step uh, electric sort of button there for the motor. So, got that open. So we'll go in now and we'll show you around the inside, which I'm trying not to make too dirty because it's already been cleaned. Um, right, so up here you've got your sort of control panel. On the left hand side is the main on and off switch for everything, 12 volt. So if I clicked it up to the sign which means uh, the van, um, so that basically means the engine battery, it tells us that the uh, engine battery is right up in the green, lovely sort of well charged battery. I haven't had it running or anything, so that's just, you know, that's just how it is. Um, so now, if I then went around and started turning all the lights on and things like that, like that, currently these lights are running off of the engine battery, okay? So now if I turn these off, go back to this left-hand one and go down to the middle and then down again, that is in the caravan, so that means your caravan battery or your leisure battery. So again, that's telling us that the leisure battery is right up in the green as well. And then we can use the, the lights, you know, as, you know, that's the proper way to use it. You need to have it down on the uh, on the leisure side, um, because otherwise if you use it on the, the engine, then you'll find that you can't start your van. Um, so always make sure you're going down rather than up, uh, unless, you know, in like sort of an emergency, you desperately need to. Um, so these are the switches I was touching. So these are just the main switches for the main lights in the middle, but the rest of them have got their own individual switches on them, you know, so you just find, you know, which ones you do and don't like uh, having on. So the whole time you've got the rocker switch on the left here, either up or down, which like I said, the down is for the leisure battery where it should be. It's telling you how many volts are in it. So you're in the green for the voltage, but this one on the right here, that says test, that's got a cup of water sign, so that's telling you how much water is in your van. Fresh water, that is. Okay, so if you then look at the lower scale, so you've got E and F, empty and full, and then quarter, half, and three quarters. If I click on this now, it goes down. And so if you look at the bottom scale now, it's telling you you've just got just under half a tank of fresh water. Okay, so these two at the top as well, that's your wastewater. So these lights here would come on if your wastewater tank was full up. Okay, so that's that side of it. That's your water scale. And the one on the left is deciding which battery to use, which should be down. 
the next one's along. Um, if I just have a quick look and make sure no taps are on before I do this, which is something that you need to do as well, um, just before you start turning on the pump. Right, no, no uh, taps are open, so we can turn the pump on now, which is this red one, which will shine like you know light up like that if it is on. So now that the pump's on, this is something you really need to do as well. You need to make sure that you do this. First thing you need to do when you come into the van is what well, one. Well, this is exactly what I do anyway. So go over to your, your cold side, pull the tap, and you'll hear the pump running. Make sure there's not loads of air, you know, chuffing out of there and let it go until it does stop chuffing out. And then put it round to your hot side and just make sure that it comes through exactly the same as the cold side did. See there, you've got a bit of air. So you need to make sure all of that is gone. And if you haven't used the van for a while, you have a lot more air than that. You know, I'm not, this is, no, this is no, no air at all, okay? So, so just make sure that it comes through nice and smooth like that. Switch it off. Make sure that the pump runs out. Like that. So that's turned itself off. Um, so you do desperately need to do that, okay? It's very important that you come in here and you pull your hot water through before you use anything like the boiler or the heating. Um, oh, just the boiler, actually, sorry, because you've got your heating there separate. Um, so if you want to use your boiler, definitely, definitely do that first. Um, and once you have done that, the light for the pump doesn't light up only when it's running. It only it lights up the whole time you've got this button on. So if you're going to, say, sleep in it overnight, then obviously you'd probably want to turn that off. Um, and then I think this light here, this button here is just for sort of other lights. In fact, actually, you, I'll tell you what it is. It's for this. Okay, so that there is like an awning light. I know you haven't got an awning on the side of the van, but it comes obviously as standard um, as part of the van. So if you were sat outside the van, outside the door here, then you've got a light, this light or that light there. So there's a switch here for it. That's what this light, that's the button for that light there, but you can also control it on the actual thing itself like that, okay? So just bear that in mind. I'll leave that on because if you have the switch off, then it won't be on anyway. So see, so I can control it from the control panel as well. Okay, so, and you can remember how that is because the A stands for awning because it's technically an awning light. Um, okay, so that's the control panel. I'm showing you how to do the, the, the tap, which is new, by the way, is a new tap um, because it was leaking underneath before. So that's a new tap. Uh, if you want to have this locked up like that, if you're going to use it for a little while, don't drive like that, but you can lock it up like that. Um, the hobs are all nice and easy. You've got an ignition on the left, which is the ignition for all four of those the grill and the oven, you know, all, all of that um, is the same ignition. And to use it, it's just like any other hob. It's literally push in and round like that to let the gas through um, and then it will light up like that. All right. And because they don't get used very often, they are some, you know, they do sometimes sound like that. But there's nothing, you know, nothing to worry about. That will go away after using it for a few minutes. Um, but like I said, you know, with a home, uh, one that you'd have at home, you have to use it every day and it, you know, it doesn't get a chance to sort of get dirty and things like that, whereas these do. Um, so sometimes you will hear that noise, but you know, as long as it stays on, uh, then you're fine. All of them have got thermocouples on them, which is this bit at the back. So <clears throat> if, for example, you had this burner on, uh, and the wind managed to blow the flame out, once the thermocouple realizes there's no heat on it, which is probably three or four seconds, it will stop the gas coming through. Um, and, you know, so it means that you won't be able to fill the van up with any gas. All right, so you don't have to worry about that. Obviously, that's not to say that you shouldn't turn it off because you should, but um, the fridge, it's a three-way fridge. So it works on uh, mains, 12 volt or gas. So I'll just show you how to do that. So if you had a hookup cable plugged in right now, which I don't, so I can't really show you it. I mean, there's no lights that come up or anything anyway, but if you were hooked up, then you could flick it over one to the right, aiming towards the hookup cable sign. So then you, uh, like I have written it on your hab sheet anyway, but it would probably start pulling around 0 0.5, 0 0.6 of an amp um, when that happens. So 
you know, that means that your fridge will start cooling down via the element at the back. The next one down, the battery sign. That'll only work when your engine battery is on. Um, and you do need to get the fridge cold either first via the gas or the mains, and then just use this one for when you're driving. And then finally, if you switch it down to gas, currently it's not doing anything. So you don't, there's no gas coming through anywhere or anything like that. Pop it down to gas. And then all you need to do, you've got a piezo ignition here. So it's a push one like that. You need to push it in and then watch down there whilst you're lighting. And just wait for it to light up. So really awkward to do with one hand, but there you go. You see the blue flame in there. And then just hold it on for a minute. And then as you let out, make sure, so I've, I've totally let go of that now. Just make sure that your blue flame down there stays in, stays blue. Uh, and, and more importantly stays on um, and then once that's on if you keep your eye on it just for say 10 20 seconds or so make sure that doesn't go out and that you've got all of your vents off on the outside obviously first so no winter covers or anything like that make sure that stays on and then around sort of now you know that's long enough to to watch it you can close it up again close her up and then if i just show you now how to turn it off on gas when it comes to turning it off, you don't need to come over here at all. There's not, you know, nothing to do with it. All you need to do is switch it off from here. Okay, so that is literally all you need to do to light it up on gas. Turn it down to the bottom one, push in on this one and use that a few times to get it lit. Watch it for a second. And then uh, obviously, like I said, slowly let your finger out of that. Because if you let it out too fast, it will just go out. So just slowly let your finger out on that. Uh, and then that's it. What was your uncle? Um, right, so the next most important thing probably um, is the uh, space heater. So it works very much the same way as the fridge does, um, except there's no original on and off switch uh, as such. So you've got this little sort of peephole here. So if you, what I like to do, what I find easiest anyway, if you use this piezo igniter a few times on its own, and just try, you can't see it with the camera, but just try and find that spark so that you have an idea where to look when you are going to try and light it up. And then all you need to do, again, really hard to do with one hand, I can't really, I'll try it. Push in when you turn it around to here, so if you, one, two, or three, and ignite at the same time. Yeah. Tell you what, I'll pop you down for a second, I'll light it up. Oh, in fact, it has lit. Oh, there you go, it has lit. So, you're looking at it there, okay? So, what I've done, if I go right the way down to the pilot, so that's on pilot flame right now, okay? That's how you, it would look when you first, if I push it in like that, okay? So, that's pilot flame. So, that's what you'll first get whilst you're still holding it in like this, okay? So, if you hold it on for a second, right now, and now I'll show you what I'm going to do. I'll lift it up and turn it around at the same time. Like that, okay? And now you'll hear it and see it start to sort of go a bit orange and, and come through a lot faster. So that's now in the main flame. The orange bits will go away after a time, you know, after use of, using it a little bit. That's not a problem at all. Um, so that's all you need to do. So now that you've got it up on sort of like six, seven, that kind of number, and it's fully let out, that's fine, that's exactly all you need to do. And make sure you can just sort of hear it going and you can see it through the hole still as well, um, which is a lot easier to do in real life. It's not quite hard to show you on, on camera. Uh, but yeah, make sure that you could, you can see it and it's all good, nice flame. Um, these do get very, very hot, okay? I will say that. So when you come to sort of turning it off, you get another bit of a rush of heat coming from it because it's, it's kind of dispersing it as it's on running uh, but when you turn it off it just doesn't really have anything to do with the excess heat so make sure that you don't touch these when it's been on for a sort of five ten minutes or so because like i said they do get very very hot but when you turn it off expect it you know that's how you turn it off as well just turn it around to the yo just expect a little bit of extra heat to come through here okay so don't get too close to it when you've had it on for a long time uh, and definitely definitely don't touch those all right but that's that's exactly how that works nothing more to it and then finally for the gas parts you've got your um water heater ultra store so ultra store means hot water 
Um, and that is down in those two lockers there, which I'll show you in a minute because there'll be a little drain to show you. All you need to do is make sure you've taken the cover off that I showed you on the outside at the start, and then come in here, flick it down there. So it's lit straight up, I heard that straight away. Now, you get a green light come on just the whole time that you've got it down on that gas symbol, okay? That's just telling you that it's on. Um, and you get a little, it's hard to see, again, hard to see on the camera, but you'll get a little orange light in there as well. So whatever number you put on, say, you know, if you put it up to 50 or 60, once it gets to that temperature, it will turn itself off and then come back in again when it needs to. Okay, so if you really wanted to, you could leave this on all the time if you're really going to use it a lot. But I would advise you, if you, you know, if you're going to say, for example, you can use it for a shower or to do the washing up or whatever. Once you have done that and you don't need the water anymore, just switch it off just by doing this. Okay, so then you won't be wasting any excess gas by keeping it cold. Um, you know, like a boiler at home, your boiler wouldn't stay on all the time to keep the water hot. You know, it'll just come in and out as it needs to. So if you just make sure you switch that off there when you don't need it. Now we go into here, which is an important bit. So your space heater, so your heating in the van is gas only. Okay, there's no electric, nothing on that. Um, but your water heater, you can use on mains. So if you've got a hookup cable plugged in, come in here and switch that down your water heating, and I've written this on the hab sheet as well, your water heater is then going to be heating your water up via the mains, via an element inside the tank. Okay, so leave that one off all the time until you're going to use it, because if you start, if you plug a hookup cable into it and don't have any water in your boiler, then you definitely need to make sure this is off, okay? Otherwise you're going to sort of blow up your boiler um, or do some damage anyway. So make sure that's off until you want to use it. Um, this here is your RCD and MCBs. So if you find that you plug something into your, uh, you know, plug a cable into your, put a plug into one of your sockets that you've got around the van, if I can speak today, um, then you'll find, and it and it doesn't work, that is, then you'll find that this one here on the left will, will be down like that, okay? So put it back up. And every now and again, if you come in here when you are hooked up, it won't work without a hookup cable. But if you come in here every now and again and push this button at the top, it will just do that and just do that a couple of times every now and again you know not very often but just you know keeps it from working because sometimes they can get a bit stuck and obviously if you put a dodgy socket in somewhere you want that to trip um, so just make sure that you do that uh, and then ne next door to that these couple of little bank of fuses that'll just be for your lights and your pump and things like that so if anything does sort of stop working then you can check there but obviously let us know but um, you can check there if you feel like it. Um, right. Yeah, so like I said, the uh, boiler is in here, in these two cupboards underneath this window. Nice and easily laid out with the pump here as well. Um, if you want to drain your boiler out, then it's just this little lever here, which you just go up like that, and then back down to there. Uh, to stop it, to close it up. That's it. That's all there is to it in there. Um, so, uh, self-explanatory really, I think in the bathroom, you've got your shower, which comes out from up here and then fold, you know pushes all the way back into that slot. But I will leave it up here, just so you can see it. Um, and then your toilet, like I said to you, has got fresh water flush. So if you've got your pump button on, which I don't at the moment, so it won't work. But you just need to push this button in and then your fresh water will come around there. And to actually drain it out, there's a grey lever down here. Turn that, open it up. And like I said to you earlier, if you find that you can't take the cassette out from outside, then you'll find that the flap is open like this. So just come in here and close it up and then you'll be able to take it out. Um, your light switches for in here is this cord as well. All right. So, I think that's about it. I, th I can't think of anything else to show you. I mean, like I said, all the, all the other lights, like that one there, they've all got their own individual switches. 
Um, yeah, I think that's about all I can show you. Um, so if you do get any more questions, then obviously let us know and we'll answer anything you need. Um, but other than that, I hope to see you soon and I hope you enjoy your van. Thanks very much.